Nissan's big on odd lately. Witness the Murano Cross Cab, the Cube, and this thing. Let's drive the 2012 Nissan Juke SV. Get used to being stared at and check the tech. hard to spot a Nissan Juke. Never has any production car looked more like a frog. I mean, look at the face of this thing with its little bulging, jutting lower jaw and big old bug eyes. The taillights do something similar, and the whole car just kind of bulges roundly in odd ways all around. But what they've got here is a very distinctive, kind of a compact, sporty crossover thing. Let's get inside. Now inside the Juke, everything's kind of high and upright. It fits the look of the car on the outside, and it's kind of a jaunty thing. Lots of rounded shapes that match that weird looking face it's got. Let's get to the center stack here. We don't have navigation, but we do have this interesting screen here. You get this on the SV or SL, the upper two trim levels. Two buttons, climate and D mode. Look what happens when I hit climate or drive mode. It changes not just the screen, but the labels on the buttons. In the drive mode setting, you've got normal, sport, and eco, self-explanatory, but each one brings up special driving gauges on the screen to show either your eco level, how greenly you're driving. Here's my boost. I can also get a G-force gauge, further eco information. Above that is a fairly standard Nissan audio system. You see this in a lot of their cars right now. I guess that's a double din space, so you do have a pretty good uh, blank palette here to work with if you want to go down and buy an aftermarket head unit. Otherwise, you're going to have AM, FM, no HD radio. Uh, we got a CD slot right here. iPod connector in this case means a true iPod cable dedicated over in the glove box. There are other trim levels that have a USB port over here, which will support USB drives and an iPod, so you get a little more flexibility. I would recommend that. Now, upgrade to the top trim, the SL, or get the navigation package, which we don't have here, obviously, and you'll also get an upgraded audio system with a Rockford Fosgate sub. Otherwise, you've just got these six kind of non-particular speakers around the cabin. They sound okay, but not great. Now, depending what Nissan materials you do your research on, you either get a standard CVT or a standard six-speed manual. I think most of these are going to ship with a CVT, but it does add $500 to the cost. So we'll call that the optional transmission. And Nissan does these very well. You go back to drive, typically, over here for shiftability. Sport is not engaged here. It's up here in the D mode, like I showed you. And remember, it's a CVT. It doesn't really have gears anyway, so when you're shifting, you're going through these sort of synthetic belt points. It's a transmission that has one long continuous range of variable ratios, but they make it seem like gears based on programming. Now, somewhere under all this is the engine, and I'm not surprised we can't see it because it's tiny. It's a 1.6 liter inline four with a turbo, you can see that back there, and direct injection. Those are the two darling technologies of small displacement engines these days, and the results speak for themselves. 188 horsepower out of this little guy, 177 foot-pounds of torque, gets this 3,000-pound crossover up to 60 in around seven seconds. Now, you've got a choice of various powertrains that will affect the MPG, but the best you can do is 2732 front-wheel drive with a CVT. If you get all-wheel drive, or a manual, or a combination thereof, you're going to get down to about 2530 MPG. Okay, let's go drive our froggy friend. Now, the first thing you notice right off the bat is it has a remarkable amount of power for a high-mileage, compact, inexpensive car. 188 horse is the real deal, and good torque as well. You don't get a huge amount of turbo lag or turbo slop in this vehicle. Uh, good credit to Nissan for designing an engine that has direct injection as well as a turbo. That adds precision. And they've done a really good job of programming this CVT gearbox to this engine. And that's something you can do very well with a CVT because it can select any ratio it wants within its high to low range. There are no set gears. Now the interesting question is, do you get the torque vectoring all-wheel drive and kind of take this thing in the direction of a kind of an inexpensive pocket rally monster. I don't know. We've got the front-wheel drive car here, and I find it handles front-wheel drive uh, nastiness like torque steer pretty well. 
to add a couple grand or more for an all-wheel drive system that is performance oriented I don't know if I would do that in a car in this price class the ride is nothing unusual it's typically sprung and lightweight the car weighs about 3,000 pounds uh, it doesn't feel truckish it doesn't feel tinny and it feels kind of tall all the time which I think is suitable for the car I did find myself missing paddle shifters on this car because this is a really quick shifting transmission I mean really quick and the paddles would seem to complement that reaching for the gear shift isn't that big a deal but they missed a small opportunity there now as you go from sport mode to normal mode you can really feel a difference in the the throttle mapping is what I'm really feeling there. It may be transmission oriented too, but it's hard to tell with a CVT. And the eco mode, as you can imagine, really takes some of the sap out of this thing. But the best performance I got was just slapping this thing in the manual mode and just loving those manual shifts on this CVT. It's, uh, it's a real gem. Okay, pricing a Juke is pretty straightforward. Start with the base on an S, $20,750, and then blow right by that. Add about four grand and go all the way to an SL. Don't fiddle around in the middle with options or the SV trim that we have here. Go to the top, it's the best value. You get the navigation system, upgraded audio, the Rockford Fosgate deal, the icon display that changes buttons, uh, leather interior, keyless, whole bunch of great stuff, moonroof as well. And then I would go with the CVT. In this car, I think it's the right transmission. You get the perfect combination of efficiency and performance. I would skip the all-wheel drive. It sounds really cool, but $2150 on a car like this is a very steep extra.